My name is Karen McCree, I'm a crofting development officer and I'm based in, on the Isle of Pallas in the Western Isles. I have been in post with the Commission since March 2021, so which is around nine months. Hello, I'm Lynn McMillan, I'm one of the new crofting development officers and I'm based in the Western Isles. The new development team was established in 2021 as a result of the National Crofting Plan, considering that a development remit was needed for the Commission. The, the, the development team takes a proactive approach to working with crofters and to actively engage crofters. And the main function of the development department is really to, to promote crofting and its benefits and its possibilities to both crofters, current crofters and um, aspiring crofters as well. In my role as a development officer, I am looking to work with crofters to help them facilitate new ideas, to diversify their crofting activities. We have been working with out of office common grazing committees to encourage them to reform as a committee and to consider the opportunities that arise from being in office and actually having an active common grazing's committee in place. Working with common grazing's was one of the first um, areas identified by the Commission um, as something that they wanted the development department to, to focus on. So uh, grazing land, common grazing land covers such a vast area of the highlands and islands of Scotland and that its management through common grazing's committees is, is, is vital. So many common grazing's aren't in office and so every three years they have to elect a new committee. So, so myself and, and Lynn there in US, we've recently engaged in a project where we've written to all of the long-term out of office grazing's in the Western Isles, just explaining a bit about the benefits of having a committee in office, how to go around doing that and what some of the possibilities are. So yes, we're very much here to engage with uh, common grazing's and to encourage them to, to actively manage uh, their land. One of the projects that the development team has worked on is to contact those crofters who had declared in the 2020 census that they, while they were resident on their croft, they were not cultivating the croft. So we have done a Western Isles wide project, a pilot project, to contact those people to find out what the reasons might be as to why they're not cultivating their croft. One of the outcomes from that piece of work was that it was clear that there was a lack of understanding as to what cultivate meant or involved. And in many cases, people actually had sheep on the croft or cattle on the croft or were growing vegetables. Um, what we will do as a result of this going forward is to ensure that in the next census, that the question is more clearly laid out so that people understand what the term means. And we will also be highlighting this across social media to ensure that people have a better understanding of what Cultivate actually means and that then will allow them to complete the next census more completely. The information that the annual census provides is essential for us because it gives us a good kind of overview of crofting in each different area and it can help us then focus our work and our direction a bit better once we understand the trends in different areas so it's very important that the crofters do return their annual census as well. So the crofting development team, we work with a wide range of stakeholders. We work, it ranges from, so crofters on the ground are number one. They are, the, they are the first people that we want to be working with. We want them to engage with us, to talk to us, and to help, we're here to help them in the first instance. But we've also, we also work with landlords, both community landlords and private landlords. We've worked with government agencies, so such as Highlands and Islands Enterprise. Um, we work with Nature Scott, with Peatland Action, Community Land Scotland with Business Gateway, with, oh, the, the, the list is, is, is almost endless. We've worked with housing committees, we've worked with private organisations as well. Um, basically, we're here to engage with, with everybody. So over these last nine months, there's been a lot of, of team building. So we also work a lot of networking as well. So we work a lot with um, our counterparts at the Scottish Crofting Federation. We work with the NFU, um, the Scottish Agricultural College as well. Um, so yes, there's a wide range of stakeholders and we're, we're trying our best to engage, engage with them all and ensure that the Crofting Commission and the development of Crofting has, a, has a, a seat at all these tables. We are working with community landowners and common grazing committees to encourage their working together in terms of developing their common grazings. 
um, whether that's for wind power, whether that's for peatland restoration, there are many opportunities for collaborative working. At the moment, rural housing is an issue of concern and we have engaged with many stakeholders to look at potential solutions to see where we can facilitate or help and support initiatives to go forward to provide rural housing. In the future there's going to be a lot of focus on carbon sequestration and a lot of funding mechanisms moving forward and a lot of the focus, especially following COP26 and countries all trying to get to net zero, there's going to be a lot of focus on carbon reduction and on reducing greenhouse gases and that will be in the agricultural industry and that also it will affect crofting. So we, we've been working with um, a couple of grazing committees who are considering peatland restoration projects. We've also worked with crofters themselves who are hoping to plant woodland, plant trees, um, and we expect that to be uh, quite a, an important part of our role moving forward as different funding schemes and different um, projects develop. In the next 12 months, we hope to grow the role of the development department. We're still very, very new, we're only nine months in, but we hope to very soon release um, a new section on the Commission website, basically a landing page for people who are perhaps not um, familiar with crofting or, or perhaps what it means or, or even know where to start. Um, so we hope to launch that in the next couple of, of weeks. And hopefully just to get the word out there a bit more that we're, that we're here and, and we want crofters to understand what the options that they have. So even when it comes to the likes of succession is a big one as well. So what happens uh, often is that crofters perhaps don't deal with or don't think about their crofts in the, for when they're no longer here. So what we want to do is encourage crofters to think about succession, to at least have a will in place, but also perhaps if they're not able to work their crofts anymore, that they might consider passing it on to to the next generation wh while they're still still here or still still living. So it's encouraging new entrants into crofting as best we can. We know that that's a that's an issue. That craft prices are an issue. Crofting faces a lot of issues, but it has a lot also to offer. And so we want to make sure that we can maximise that as, as best that we can. So we want to encourage, basically get, get in touch with us and, and we'll see if we can help you out. If any crofter has an idea for diversification of their croft, then I would absolutely encourage them to get a hold of us, to contact us by email or by telephone, and we will help them and signpost them to support and funding.